full chapter yesterday, chapter 9, to a single verse today, verse 38 of chapter 9, which is followed by a long list of signatures, actually 26 verses of signatures, 27 verses of signatures uh, at the beginning of chapter 10. Here's the little verse, verse 38. Because of all this, we make a firm covenant in writing. On the sealed documents are the names of our princes, our Levites, and our priests. And then there follows a long, long list that sign this covenant. The people have prayed earnestly to God. And we discover here that there's a lesson and an encouragement and indeed a challenge for you and for me as well that, that sometimes prayer and the response that we make to God in prayer and the commitment that we're making to God in prayer is so real and so important that we would actually even dare to call it a covenant. And that's what's happening here. The people are making a covenant, a, a, a prayer of commitment to God that they're calling a covenant. Historically, both in the scriptures and indeed in the, the life of the church down through church history, men and women often framed their promises to God, their personal commitment to God in, 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 in terms of covenant, in terms of written promises to God, promises that they would write down. You discover this if you read, for example, through the journals of John Wesley, or the writings of people like Jonathan Edwards and others. And there's something important about writing things down. And I would encourage you actually to write things down and perhaps to keep even a, a journal of things that you write down. Whenever I was a, a young Christian, I was part of an organization that was then called Christian Endeavor, uh, CE. Uh, and we had a, a covenant, uh, a Christian Endeavour covenant. I think CE still uh, has an active member's covenant to this day. I, I can repeat it for you without even probably having to look at my notes, even though it's, it's 40 years from I was part of that youth organisation, relying on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation and trusting in God for strength. I promise him that I will strive to do whatever he would want to have me do. I will pray to him and read my Bible every day. I will support my own church and its services in every way within my power. And throughout my whole life, I will endeavor by God's grace to lead a Christian life. I would encourage you to so Take time with God that in your life and indeed in my life in an ongoing way there would be those times where we so pray and make commitments to God that they would be such that we would want to write them down, that they would be covenants that we would make with God so that our good desires, our, our hopes, our longings and even our prayers wouldn't just evaporate. We need to be, as followers of Jesus Christ, those who make firm choices to follow Christ, firm decisions to read God's Word, firm commitments to a life of prayer, firm commitments to be those who give generously to God's work, to set aside a a tithe of what we earn for kingdom and for ministry, to live a, a godly life, to forsake sin and to live a holy life, and to follow Christ. And sometimes you need to write it down. Sometimes I need to write down that commitment in order to make it such that it's something that I can revisit, that you can revisit, that you can revisit perhaps often, perhaps 
regularly, perhaps even for some uh, revisit on a, on a daily basis. Something that you sign, as these people in chapter 10 sign their covenant, their commitment, their prayer. And so let us pray. Relying on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation and trusting in God for strength, I will strive to do whatever he would want to have me do. I will pray to him and read my Bible every day. I will support my own church and its services in every way within my power. And throughout my whole life, I will endeavour by God's grace to lead a Christian life. And the collect for today, St. Patrick's Day. Almighty God, in your providence, you chose your servant Patrick to be the apostle of the Irish people, to bring those who were wandering in darkness and error to the true light and knowledge of your word. Grant that walking in that light, we may come at last to the light of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What I would love to encourage you to do in this moment as you just take a few minutes to be uh, quiet in God's presence is that on this St. Patrick's Day you would ask the Lord to give you a deep desire to see his spirit move again in power across this whole island of Ireland to which Patrick brought the faith all those uh, centuries ago that God would raise up his church to faithfully proclaim Christ and that you would be part of that army that he would raise up to proclaim Christ in these days.